Hey, Coach, Matt, Hall. Uh, Matt Hall, K-Stone Line. I wanted to ask specifically about, about uh, Siri Lewis. One, am I saying his name right? And then two, like what kind of player is he for you guys perhaps in the future? Um, from what I understand, and I hope I've been saying it right, it's, it's like Surrey. You know, you're asking Surrey for a, a question. So, um, it, it, but he, you know, he's a, a young man when we, at the, after we signed that group in the fall, um, and we had talked, we really felt we wanted to add an athletic forward, big man kind of guy that had some, you know, could rebound, run the court, do those things. I think he really fits that mold. Um, you know, Dejuan, you got to give him some credit. He's a, a friend of his. He kept, I don't know how many times he texted myself and the staff and said, what about my boy, Surrey? You got to, you got to, you know, you got to connect. We got to get, so we finally got out there, started watching him. Um, a great young man, great family. Uh, uh, you know, they he made a decision to go to the prep school. It was a hard decision to leave home. They're a close knit family. Uh, it was, you know, he'll tell you it was uh, those first few weeks being away from home were really hard. But in the long run, I think it's really helped him as you know grow into a man uh, to become a better basketball player. Um, he he made a lot of improvement over the year, and you know, really focused on you know getting better. He also was a very, very good student, had had some interest from Ivy League schools, uh, which was, you know, you know, it, it says a lot about him and his family and his upbringing. Um, so we're really happy. Just a good, good guy, good young man. He's all fired up for Easter. They, you know, they not getting out of the house and stuff like that. His mom's been really restrictive on him going out, especially in Chicago. They've had uh, it's been a hot spot, but he got a, uh, they bought him for Easter, a, a basketball hoop. And he was, all, he, we talked Saturday and he was getting that all set up so he could, can't go to the playgrounds in Chicago. They got him locked up. He can't get in the gym. So they, they got him a hoop. And, and now, although they had a snowstorm today in Chicago, you can't get out there and shoot. But, uh, you know, that, that excited him and it shows how much he wants to work and, um, and get better as a player. And, and if you wouldn't mind, a similar question about Rudy Williams. Obviously, he put up great numbers at NEO uh, across the board. Just a, just an evaluation of him, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, when we had, you know, had some conversations, obviously, with, with David Sloan and, and, you know, him, his desire to maybe leave, we, you know, we jumped on as a staff. We, we hit it hard, you know, getting on point cards who was available. Um, it just, I'll be honest, we were very, very fortunate uh, to latch on to, on to Rudy. Uh, the first time I called him, and I think if you talk to him, uh, you just, you'll love his personality, you'll love his smile, uh, love his energy. Um, he rarely wears a shirt, and, and I'm not, you know, sure what that, what that's about, but uh, his, his coach, uh, Coach Jackson from NEO, first thing he asked me when I called, he said, Coach, when you talked to him, did he have a shirt on? And I said, no, he didn't. He goes, well, I, I'm, I'm happy because he never wears a shirt for me either, too. So, but um, I think he just has a, a vibrant personality. He's a leader. Um, he's got a, if, you, if you've seen him, he's got a, a pretty good body uh, physically. He's, he's developed, which, you know, we feel really good about Nigel Pack. I think he's, you know, he's got a chance to be a star in the future. But this, this gives us – you can't just live on one point guard. I think they could actually play together at times and – because Nigel's a, a good scorer, and actually Rudy, uh, this year they asked him to score more. Um, I think he might have led the country in assists for junior college, but he still scored uh, in, in the near 20, 18 or 20 points a game. So he, he gives you that. And the one question we have, and, and you know, he, we kind of tease him about it. They, they played a lot of 2-3 zone, and the first I asked his coach, you know, can he guard anybody? Because we're not playing much zone in Manhattan, and 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 he's almost taken it as a challenge. He, I, I've talked to his uh, AU coaches, his high school coaches. He he said he was a, a big. They've said he was a big time defender growing up. He was short. He was five four or so as a sophomore, and he was kind of one of those little pesty guys. And and he he promises me he can guard. So we'll we'll see about that as as we get him into the program. With one recruiting spot or spot left, one scholarship left, um, what what do you do? You, you look more towards backcourt or frontcourt for that spot? 
I think we ideally we'd love to get somebody versatile that could give us a little bit of both, to be honest. And that, and that might be a stretch. Um, I think it's all you, you, for practice. You need at least six perimeter guys, obviously, to go three on three to have practice. Uh, we've been fortunate to have some good walk-ons. Um, if you can get that seventh guy, and that's you know we were you know so blessed. I always talked about Pearson. Um, you know, he could, if we needed him, if Antonio was sick or Monte was hurt, you know, he could go with the big guys. If somebody was hurt with the guards, he was able to rotate down and, and he could give us both. But we, you know, you don't have that. Uh, you know, we don't, we're not going to probably have a walk on like that. Joey's a good walk up, but we won't have that next year. So I think if we could get somebody that could give us a little bit of both, I think that would be the ideal thing to fill in the class. Bruce Mick Schaefer, 41 Action News in Kansas City. Thanks for doing this. Um, this class, as far as depth goes, as far as talent goes, is is very, very good. Just wondering, I know you don't know how it's all going to pan out three and four years down the road here, but where, where does the excitement of this class rank with, with the others you've had in Manhattan? Well, I just got off a, a Zoom call with all the team. We were kind of waiting. It's the first time we could include uh, – uh, Rudy and, and, and Surrey in the call, you know, we've been talking to them individual, but just kind of did a Zoom call, welcomed everybody. And the first thing I said, I, I can't be more excited about it. The, the group that we've been able to sign to add these two guys late, uh, you know, it, you feel good about them. And you got, you know, Casey sat out, obviously, for us. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a lot. And Tom and I have talked about it a lot, like, when you had the group with Dean and Cam and Barry, uh, but now you even have more guys and, and you got, as you said, talent, you got some depth, you got some versatility. I think you have scoring. I know that's a concern of, it's a concern of ours. I know it's a concern of our, our fans, you know, you, you know, who's going to score for us. And um, I think you got some guys that can step right in and, and score the basketball. So I, I think it's got a little bit of everything and, and, Got, you know, for the most part, guys that have come from winning programs. Uh, and I think that's always important. You know, we talked about Dean, Cam, and Barry, you know, what they did with their teams. Um, you can go down the line. You know, Nigel was with one of the – had one of the best teams in uh, in Indiana. And, uh, you know, coming coming through, he also played on a very, very good AU team in EYBL. Uh, you know, Luke – actually beat Davion to go to state. They didn't get to play the, uh, the final four, but both of them had, you know, successful years and successful seasons. Talked about Davion and then Selton's team, you know, was one of the best in the country. I mean, they, they did things that no one has done, beating Oak Hill, beating Prolific, who a lot of people felt might have been the best team in the country. Um, you know, so, you know, you got guys that have come from winning programs, Rudy led his team, you know, to uh, to Hutch as a freshman, won the conference back-to-back -back years. So you feel good about that also. Hey, Coach. Rob Collins also in Kansas City, Fox 4. How you doing? Thanks for doing this. Uh, yep. Can you talk about how you've been able to talk with these guys with all these stay-at-home orders and new technology? Have you had to ask some of the younger folks around how to operate some of these things? <laughs> Tom and I talked about it today. It's it's. I've had to have a lot of lessons uh, I'm lucky I have two phones and an iPad because I got to have different people on on the phones helping me get to Zoom calls and whatever. And I know the first one uh, I was going to have, we've done Zoom home visits. We've done all this stuff. I I was sweating, big, making sure I'm hitting the right button and making sure they could hear me. And you know why why is my face on there and theirs aren't? And so it, it's 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 been an interesting transition and. Um, I basically, you can, you know, talk to my wife. I, I get up in the morning, I come, you know, she sends me to the basement and I get in the, in the little office and I'm there. I come up for lunch. We have recess and I take a walk with her, uh, have a healthy snack. And then we go back to, I go back in the, in the dungeon again and get on the phone. And, and then we've, you know, I've even had to get back on it. It's, it's been stressful. Um, it, it's, it hasn't been easy. Uh, but uh, we've been fortunate, as I said, to, you know, to sign a couple guys that, you know, we, you know, at first they said recruiting was going to be April 15th, then it was May 1st. And then when they said June, uh, you know, families and, and, and young men and coaches just said, hey, you're going to have to make decisions. It's hard. Uh, we, we're fortunate. We have a great video staff. 
Uh, they've been able to put a lot of, you know, highlights and, and tours and all that type of stuff together to help us kind of explain what we have to offer here. And, you know, we've, we've just done our best. And as I said, it's, it's, you know, you can't wish this upon anybody, but um, you got to do your best every day. And that's what we talk to our players about, you know, with them just being back home and the new recruits, you got to do more with less. And, 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 uh, you know, if we can if we can do that and survive this, I, I hope we're all going to be better from it. Hey, Bruce, I got a question for you, one on Rudy and one on Siri. With Rudy, do you see him more as a scoring point guard or a port passing point guard? And with Siri, does he have any stretch capabilities or is he strictly more of just an inside forward? Well, I think Rudy, I really believe he can give you both. Uh, if you look at his numbers, uh, he – he did improve his, his three-point shooting. Uh, the coach, Coach Jackson, if you talk to him, he had, the first year they had a really good team, and he just he was mainly a distributor. This year he had to score more. His three-point shooting percentage went up to about 38. He's an 80% free throw shooter. Uh, the thing I really like is he, got, he has a mid-range game. He actually has a, a pull-up jump shot, um, you know, which is, which is nice. Uh, so I think he can do both, I, you know, and – and we'll see if he can guard. You know, that'll be the, the big question. And he, he does have the physical body um, that you, you need, especially, you know, when you talk about you always, you know, you're going to compete against Baylor with the physical guards that they had, the best teams uh, in, the, in the country, in the league. Um, you know, you, you've got to be able to deal with that. And, I, and, you know, I know I tease him about not having a shirt, but I'm happy he's – He's proud to not have that shirt on. That he's shown off a body that you, that that you know can compete at the Big Twelve. Uh, you know, with Surrey, uh, I, he's increased his range. Uh, you know, I know he wants to become a better three-point shooter. I, I think he's very, very comfortable or gotten better out to out to seventeen. Um, you know, his main strengths though are are definitely, you know, his athleticism, running, jumping, defending. Uh, you know, but he, 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 he really plays hard. And, that we, and he played on a really, really talented team this year in Compass. Coach, you brought, how tough was it to, to see both David and Cardi go? And what were those conversations like there at, at the end? Well, I think everybody kind of knew uh, Cardi's situation. Um, you know, David, I, I, I definitely – I wasn't surprised, but I didn't think – I really thought he would still stay. I really believe, and this is nationwide, it's, you know, kids are at home, um, they're around people, people are, you know, talking to them, you know, that don't always know what the reality is. If these guys were back here in workouts and, and we were able to give them love, I think they're, you know, you probably wouldn't have quite as many transfers nationwide. Uh, it's a tough, tough situation. There's so many unknowns, and that's what I've tried to talk to a lot of our, our, I talk to our guys all the time. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, we have hopes and, and prayers, you know, that we're going to be back on campus and, and, you know, we're going to have a season next year, but who knows? So why, why stick another unknown in your life? And, uh, but it, it was, you know, you know, like I said, we, it's, uh, this is, this is not something that's new. The, the portal's not new. Um, if they do change the rules, to where they, uh, you know, where they can transfer and not sit out, and they have the one-time transfer opportunity. Uh, to me, it's it's disturbing. It, it will be chaos. Uh, uh, obviously, I'm not for it, uh, and especially if you, you know, we do it in the middle of a pandemic where kids aren't on campuses and you're not being able to be around your guys. Uh, it it would not to me. It would not be a very good decision. But obviously, there's other people that make that decision and not me. So it's a, it's a tough thing, but we you know, as I said, we, we feel really good about uh, Nigel. We feel, you know, great about Rudy. Um, even Selton gives you some, he, he played point guard almost all year for his team. Uh, you know, so you got three guys that can handle the ball. I know it's, I thought Mike McGurl last year at the, you know, I thought it was great for him to end on a positive note and, uh, you know, he had his best passing day of, the, of his career against TCU with six assists, one turnover, made some of his best passes. Um, I know he's he's really kind of taken over leadership for our team. And, uh, you know, it, and Dejuan really wants to get better 
uh, handling the basketball. Uh, so, you know, I, I hope we're going to be more versatile and have more people that can score in different ways and more people that can pass and dribble. Coach, you referenced, uh, pardon me, Casey briefly earlier. How did practice go for him the last, you know, half of the season? And is he somebody that you could project as a future starter at the Big 12 level? Well, I hope so. I, I hope his physicality, I, I think he's going to be a very competitive player. You know, we, you know, we feel good about our big guys uh, coming back. Uh, but, you know, he, you know, we, I think I said at press conference, uh, he, he definitely changed practice. And somebody brought this up to me in a phone conversation that they thought, after, you know, just from an outsider, they thought Mac really played better once Casey uh, got on campus. And, and, you know, I told you guys, he, you know, he made practice very tough for our, for our bigs, uh, you know, and when you're on the scout squad, it's a lot easier. You can kind of just, you know, you just go and you don't, you're not responsible. You missed a shot. It's not a big deal. You just keep playing. But, uh, you know, his, his physicality, his strength, uh, you know, are really important. You know, the bad part about him not being here is we thought we were really making progress. Ben was making progress. The coaches with his footwork, his hands, uh, those things. And, and now we got to rely on him. And it's, you know, with all our guys, the self-discipline, you know, doing more with less, you know, all those things are so, so important. And, you know, with Casey, those first couple of weeks, he's back in Toronto and it's cold and snow and you can't get in gyms. And he just, he just said, I, you know, I, what do I do coach? And, and I said, well, I knew I had been to his house. So I said, you know, take me on a little tour. And uh, he does have a garage. And I said, well, you can use your garage and it's not that cold. So, and, you know, Ben has been sending them different ideas, footwork, you know, it's going back to old school. When I, you know, we used the sidewalk and a line and we took tape or chalk and, and did a box and we worked on footwork. We, you know, we've been able to send them jump ropes and things like that. So they're going to have to, they're going to have to have some imagination, some creativity uh, to help themselves continue to get better. Hey, Coach, uh, going back to follow up on what Grant asked about, uh, with this one open scholarship that you have, uh, would you like to uh, use it on high school, junior college, grad transfer, or just whatever you can find that's the best available? Yeah, I think whatever is the best available. I, I, I don't know if I want to, you know, add another freshman where now they're almost the majority of your team. Um, you know, but if it's, a, if it's the right player, uh, we, we would feel good about it. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, against even a transfer that had to sit out. Um, you know, just you have if it's if it's a good player. I think obviously Baylor had has had pretty good success with with taking transfers that you know have, have helped them become a better program. Um, you know, and and if it's the right grad transfer, uh, you know, we would take them. But we we're kind of eyes and ears on everything. Obviously, the every day the portal. Uh, you know, they just keep adding up, and we got to see who's out there. Um, I, I I wouldn't say we're in a rush. Uh, we we've we've been talking with a variety of kids, and um, you know, just hope to get the best one. Is the portal almost overwhelming at times? I mean, so many kids pop in, and then you got to figure out, you know, what level of player they are, and just keep going with it. Yeah, uh, you know, there's there's no doubt it it it. You know, our, our coaches, you know, we're, we're in a difficult situation, obviously not being able to communicate with our guys. And, and now you're sitting here, you're, you know, we're all – I'll do a, a three-way call or a four-way call with our recruiting coaches almost every day just to get an update. We, we text, you know, we're constantly just seeing it, – it's just – it's continuous. And, it, and um, I don't know if it's good for college basketball. And as I talked about, if they change the rule – Oh shoot! That thing might double, um, and I, I just don't understand, especially in this this difficult time. I'm not sure it's a it's a, it would be a great thing, but uh, we'll see what happens. Will uh, Mike and Levi be able to step up and be leaders on next uh, season's team as seniors? Yeah, I I really believe they can. Um, Mike has done the you know right now he's really taking it upon himself. Uh, you know, to do that along with Dage one. And I talked to you guys along the, uh, throughout the season. Um, 
you know, that day's one is, is, you know, said a lot for a freshman and he cares so much. Uh, he worries about everybody. And, and that's another thing we've talked about uh, as, as a group, you know, somehow, even though we're far away, uh, we got to be closer when we come back and the, the communication and, you know, these guys, they, at night, they're playing video games together. They got their, their group ch uh, chats. They got a, another chat with the, uh, with the coaches. Um, as I said, we're trying to do, you know, several calls. We're trying to do individual calls, group calls. So it's, um, you know, that it's, it's, it's going to be a challenge, but it's, uh, it was the number two thing I talked about today uh, with our guys and, and the importance of that. Coach, from a physical standpoint, uh, can you update us on how Selton is with his hand and then with Montavious too? Well, I, I really feel bad for Selton uh, <laughs> because he couldn't even get into a doctor's office to get a, a, a x-ray. So, Luke, um, we think he's healed. He spent the right amount of time, but it would have been nice to have an x-ray, uh, you know, through Luke and through the doctors, we've, we've done FaceTime calls, uh, exercises that, uh, you know, they want, they want him to do. Um, I, 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 we're, I, I would say he pro his, his high school coach, his prep school coach, Kenny, you know, he told me, Coach Selton's been working out already. But, you know, I, I just – we don't want him to go too fast and make sure it's healed. And I've got to – you know, I, I told him how important he is to us next year. And um, I don't want that hand to have an issue. And, and it's important. I said, you, you just got to be a little more patient. Uh, I, I've joked with him uh, that he, he needs to use that left hand anyway. That, that, that's a great way. I said, you know, I told, I told him, my mom always told me, God did things in your life to help you improve. And I said, God, you know, I hate to have you have a broken hand, but now you have a chance to work on your left hand. So hopefully that's going to get better and, and, you know, become a weapon for you a year from now. So, so that's been a little tough for him. Um, and, and then, you know, with uh, Montavious, he got out of his brace last week. He literally just called me a couple minutes ago, right before I got on after our team chat, just to give me an update. He feels really good. Uh, he's doing some stuff. Again, we're trying not to go too fast with him, but uh, you know, they, Luke and Ben have, a real good progression, progression with that. And I don't even know if you guys know, uh, Dejuan had a procedure uh, the day we got back after uh, they canceled the uh, the Baylor game that afternoon. We got back because we knew he won. We were all going to have to get out of town. So he was in a brace, uh, nothing serious. Uh, uh, and he just he just got out of the brace. He was in it for four weeks. and And he's making progress with that also. Bruce, when you uh, look at these new guys, I know it's crazy early to think about it, but how many of them do you see as potential starters on next year's team? Well, I don't, I, I'm not sure about starters, but, I, you know, I really think we got to have two or three of them become major factors for our team. And, and that's why I've emphasized to our, our older guys, you know, you, you got to help them. And they, and they just, on our uh, – in our little group Zoom chat that we were just on, several of them spoke up, and, and it was it was kind of ironic. The freshman uh, Antonio and Dejuan, and, and they actually spoke up and said, "You guys, this is hard. This is and it and it, it you got to listen to these guys." And I was really proud of Antonio talking about listening. Um, you know, he said, "Listen to these guys." I I, I didn't realize last year. And the, the more you listen and get yourself ready now, the, the better it's going to help. It's going to help you, and we're going to be a better team in the future. Hey, uh, Bruce, when you when you look at the numbers for for Rudy, uh, they are strikingly similar to David. I mean, he, he's averaged a few more points per game and a couple more rebounds. But how similar are their games, especially when you look back that basically both of them led the nation in, in junior college level and assists. Well, I told Tom today that I I didn't want to bring it up because last year I brought it up for David and then it, no I wasn't going to bring that up either but uh, but um, but I, I think Rudy you know is is uh, you know one his physical presence uh, is is much different 
uh, his his energy, his personality. It's totally, if you talk to him, you FaceTime him once, the, the smile goes from one side of the screen to the other. Um, it could be, you know, 9.30 in the morning or when he sends me a videotape at 2.30 a.m. Um, you know, he's got a smile and energy on his face. Uh, uh, you know, so th that that part of it is a little different. Uh, you know, as I said, they, they both led the country in assists, so they distributed. Um, I think, you know, Rudy is a little, probably because of his body, a little, you know, could score a little more versatile than David did. But, you know, David still had his nice moments for us. Uh, will this be the most newcomers you've ever had on one team at a time, or have you had a, a team with more? Well, I, I think it's, it's probably close. I, I th it wasn't a Dean's year. Uh, Dean and Barry and Cam, we had quite a few guys coming in, including uh -huh. walk-ons. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's going to be – when anytime you get, a ma you know, a majority of new guys, it, it's uh, – you know, you always have a little bit of fear, but I think we're excited about it. Uh, especially the kid, type of kids they are, the character they are, the, the you know the quality they, of player they are, and and uh, you know just I, I just feel good about them, and and we're very very fortunate to have this group coming in. Anything else for coach? Bruce, I wanted to hop back in for one second. Um, at the I think it was the very first question you mentioned that you wanted to give Dejuan like an assist for. Uh, getting getting Siri kind of on board, like what did that actually mean? Did were you guys maybe not on him super hot until Dejuan said it, or was it more just that Dejuan kind of giving his seal of approval made you guys feel better about well, it? No, he just kept pushing. You got to, yeah. you got you got to work our guy. You got to work our guy. And I can't remember one of the bus trips or flights. I'm coming back and I, I and the, he all of a sudden I get a text, Dejuan. You know, have you talked to my guy lately? Have you know he just you know that he he just he was sold on him and and I think uh, you know that that definitely helped and you know once you, again I, I think you get to know uh, Siri he's got a he's just a good family good upbringing good character uh, quality person and uh, he wants to be a good basketball player and 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 that's that's important. 